What's up guys, Hodger Fronts here, back at it again with another video. And in this video guys, we're gonna be going over the best decks after Age of Overlord comes out. So you guys already know the set is kind of crazy. A lot of decks are getting new support, plus new decks are actually getting introduced in this set, like Horus, and of course the Sinful Spoil cards. But let's go ahead and get into the tiers. We have Top Deck, Watch Out, High Potential, Experienced Pilot, and we have Tough Spot. So starting off with our first pick, we have Tristina's, Testina's actually, I always wanna say Tristina's. Let's go ahead and rank them. I think here, honestly, after the new support, we're gonna go and put them at Watch Out. I've told you guys before, I actually put this at the top deck when they got announced, but the new support is actually really good. And the XYZ monster actually lets you send these down cards on your opponent's field, all of them to the grave. I think this is probably good against something like Labyrinth. Now, yes, they can activate in response, but you're gonna go ahead and kind of make them use all their cards and, you know, kind of waste it off of that one effect, which is pretty good, in my opinion. And I think this has a lot of application later down the line, but let me know what you guys think, of course, where I rank things, did I miss anything for this tier list? Of course, let me know down below. Let's go ahead and get into the next one, and that is the Rescue Ace Sinful Spoils together. And that is definitely top deck because uh, it actually helps the deck a lot and helps it kind of further its own combos and the Dio Blathos monster itself is actually a good starter too you might only see like people running one or two of it but in general it's a very good uh, engine for rescue ace so yeah that stack is finally going to be pushed to maybe tier zero we'll finally see right but it's a great add-on for rescue ace moving on to our next pick we have marine cess and marine cess for me honestly it's probably at experience pilot i mean it depends on how many hand traps you know we're kind of running in that meta but marine Sus can actually pack a lot of hand traps inside of its own strategy which is great they have to be the right choices though if not then the deck is not going to be uh, interrupting too much of the decks that it's of course versing but overall the marine Sus strategy is very strong and very cheap too so if you're looking to pick up something like that definitely consider marine Sus. going on to our next pick we have exo sisters and it's sort of in that same spot we have not seen any new like Exorcist support at all. So it's really just the set that it came out in. And I mean, honestly, it needs more support to help further its, you know, combos and kind of correct little, you know, misplays here and there. But it is still a very strong deck. It can play a D-Shifter and D-Shifter has not left the format at all. So it's still a good deck, it's, you know, with the right pilot. You can see, you know, a lot of success in the meta. Next up are Sharks, and I'm gonna put it watch out, but I'm gonna say High Potential. The new XYZ monster they got from Age of Overlord actually lets you attach your opponent's monster to this card in response to an equip spell attaching to your monster. So if any of your opponents go ahead and equip a equip spell onto your monster, you can activate this, but your own strategy actually goes ahead and does it for you. So you can kind of get that effect and attach something for your opponent's field, and it does not uh, target by the way so something really cool to note and um i can see this deck going far but i can't wait to see further you know um first place second place winnings for this deck going on to the next one we have rika sun avalon and definitely a deck you need to watch out for it's a deck that will creep up on you if you're not paying attention to it and of course um if you just don't know what to do against it so it's something that you really do need to get your knowledge up on and i don't think it's leaving the meta anytime soon Going to the next one with Drytron, and I'm gonna say Drytron is an experienced pilot. I wanna say high potential, but honestly, we haven't seen too much of Drytron right now. A lot of things, a lot of crazy decks are out in the meta, and I just haven't seen many people playing Drytron, even though we have the Herald of Orange Light at three now. So maybe it's just not the right time for it to shine, but it might get further support later on, who knows, or even other um, archetypes that it can use in its strategy. But we'll have to see what happens. Going to our next one, we had the Dio Blathos, if I'm saying that right, <laughs> the Bella Star, something like that. The Simple Spoils, there we go, we're just gonna say that. I think uh, this deck has high potential. This is without the Rescue Ace, just itself. I think we need uh, further support for this archetype, and it could definitely soar. But for now, I think it's definitely high potential, and we're gonna have to kind of have to wait for that new support to come out. Next up is Manadium and 100% top uh, top tier deck. Reason being is that, okay, we have the Calamity Lock, right? A lot of people don't care about the Calamity Lock uh, nowadays, but there's also uh, a new support card I got from Age of Overlord as well. I got uh, several cards, but you can actually go ahead and 
turn <laughs> turn that turn your opponent's uh, turn into the end phase so pretty much it's a turn to skip combo <laughs> with calamity and that monster it's a vita monster but kind of insane and yeah definitely top deck i mean who knows we'll see what happens right but i think it has a lot of potential so much potential to be the top deck this format next up we have the red dragon archfiend uh, deck and i'm gonna have to go ahead and say it's gonna be high potential the deck is really good now it does has have its you know of course flaws in terms of you know the red dragon archfiend itself but I mean, other than that, it's really good to have the hot red on field. You have your trap card. So if your opponent tries the dark ruler, no, you know, no more you, you can go ahead and respond to that and negate that. It has a lot of flexibility and I can't wait to see. Um, you can actually go ahead and have bestials in the deck too. A lot of people are using this as like a, another way of, you know, playing their dragon link deck. So, I mean, who knows? Who knows what's really gonna happen, but I 100% love this deck and can't wait to see it shine. You know, come on, Jack Atlas, of course. Next up, we have Curly, and I'm actually gonna put that in Watch Out. Now, normally I would say top deck, but I think it's slowly outclassed by the other decks we have out right now. Also, it loses to the Link 5, uh, the Goddess from the Underworld. And again, if you're playing it correctly, you know, if you're playing against this deck correctly, you can definitely catch this deck off guard and take the W. Going on, we have the Watt strategy. This is the Watt Tuna. And I'm going to have to say, I don't want to see Tough Spot. Mm, experienced Pilot. Ah, you know what? It's new. I want to say High Potential. You can mix this with something. But uh, definitely go ahead and watch out for Sparkman, my fellow Yugi tuber um, Because he's going to be cooking a really spicy deck profile for you guys soon. So definitely go ahead and make sure you guys check that out when it comes out. But going on to our next one, that's TG's. And yeah, TG's are in a tough spot. Even though it came out with new support. It's basically like it can make the Calamity Lock, but at that point you should play decks like, you know, Manadium, why not, or Synchron that can make it do so much better at making that lock, right? And more consistent and other different routes to uh, get there. But next up we have the Brandon Illusionist, and it's still a top deck. If not, it would be top of like Watch Out, but I mean, it really, I mean, it also did get that new support card from the uh, Illusionist uh, card chimera card from uh page overlord so that's something to note as well and it was already a top strategy before so this kind of helps sustain its placement on the list next up we have unchained and same thing unchained now it actually did not get any new support from age overlord but this deck is still crazy i mean come on guys like the first place winnings it got from like last format it's just it's really good it's really good i don't see this leaving anytime soon but uh, next up, we have the Horus cards, finally. And something you want to watch out for, or I kind of want to put high potential. I'm going to say high potential again. So this is pure Horus, right? This is pretty much a stun variant. Like, this deck was made to run. There can only be one. They're all different types, um, all different attributes. It's crazy. Now, uh, I do have another pick for this later on the list. But yeah, Based on itself, I think it has a lot of high potential. A lot of people say that it needs to rely on another strategy. I don't necessarily think so, but um, there are a lot of other strategies it can meld with and do very well. Now, next up we have our heroes, and same thing, experienced pilot. Heroes haven't gotten any new support recently, but they're still a very good deck and they'll sneak up on you if you're not paying attention. Now we have Kesh Tira, and same thing, I kinda wanna say experienced pilot. I don't wanna say tough spot, even though it sort of is, but it's more of a going second deck and you still should be careful of the deck if you're versing it as well. Now, Labyrinth is top deck because tier zero, it can go turn zero uh, epidemic virus set. So in activity, so it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. You guys have not seen that with the new um, Arius support monster that came out in uh, Age of Overlord. Kind of crazy. Now, Dark World is a deck you want to watch out for. I would put this top deck. So you're getting two new cards, Jen and Ken. You guys already know. <laughs> it's like from a Mortal Kombat game or something, but yeah, you're getting those two common cards in this set, and they can actually do very well for Dark World. Now, after some, you know, we see some gameplay and see how well the deck does. I think it'd be top deck for sure. But for now, deck you should definitely watch out for. Going on to our next one, we have Trap Trick and Trap Trick is a deck that has a lot of high potential 
Again, it's a still it's still a very good deck, in my opinion. It really is. But I feel like you should play uh, Labyrinth at that point. You know? So it's like, mm, You could try uh, Trap Trick Lab. But, I mean, with the support we're getting from, of course, this set, you should just play Pure Lab, in my opinion. Going on to our next one, we have Tier Limit Horus. And yeah, that's definitely top deck. So, Tier Limit is back. You guys, we need to... Make peace with that. It's coming back. And people have been saying that Tier Limit is the best um, engine you can run with Horus. Like, they melt the best together. I've heard people say you can run a Horus with um, Therion, like Therion King Regulus and cards like that. But it's a little bricky. So Tier Limit might be the best solution for the deck. And, I mean, we'll see in the upcoming weeks. We've seen some successful uh, first places. Uh, already but yeah it's kind of crazy now we have the dinos right and dinos are gonna have to be experienced pilot we haven't gone to this back to three i see this every list and you guys will know <laughs> but um unfortunately it is what it is i think with further support too i mean we do have like the transius source cards but they're not really honestly for it to be in my opinion so with everything we've gone so far i think it just needs more Next up, we have our Salomon Greats, and yeah, that you definitely need to go ahead and watch out for. I feel like every time, you know, Salomon Greats gets, like, hyped up, we don't see too much success from it, but then kind of, like, you know, gave it a little more time, there you go. It's popping wins all over the place. It's still a crazy deck. With the new support that came out from the Legendary Duelist set, it really, really boosted the deck. It's the support that we needed, so thank you, Konami, but um, yeah, the deck is really nice, and I love to see it winning first place. Now we have Sprite, and Sprite is still a top deck for sure. You know, how many variants it has, for hire, you know, Runic, Runic for hire. Uh, it just has so many different types of variants, and it's just such a fun deck to play. Just playing level twos all day, like, you guys know, only the Sprite players know what I'm talking about. But next up we have our tier limits, and again, top deck. <laughs> tier limits are back. I mean, if you want to say watch out, but I honestly feel like tier limits are top tier look at the ocg if you see an ocg tier list uh, tier limit list you'll see like uh, this is that one this is that one this is that one this is that two this is that two <laughs> and it's still getting like top you know eight placement like it's crazy and we have to accept it like it's just back it, it's just back i think pure is probably slightly worse than with the worst cards you know what i mean because you're playing a little bricks with pure so in my opinion, I think it's slightly worse than horse, but you guys let me know, of course. And now we have Thunderies, which is, of course, getting in that top deck for sure. I mean, come on, guys. Like, finally got that YCS win. I'm so happy for them. But um, Konami's not hitting this deck. I don't see why they would. So it's definitely at the top tier status. And a deck that you 100% need to watch out for, actually top of watch out, is Makanko. Now, Makanko are actually, they did get new support from this set the form of the equip spell a few other cards too but um makanko is crazy and there is a going first makanko build by uh you know the one and only Yu -Gi -Oh. you guys should go ahead and check them out but the deck is notorious for going second as well like because the cards like evenly match you have a lava golem so definitely a really really strong strategy that you need to watch out for <laughs> but looks like that's the end of our video for the best decks post age of overworld if you guys liked the video, make sure you give it a huge like. Comment down below if I missed any decks. We didn't add um, or dot it, but again, something like that, let me know and I'll, I'll tell you guys where you should go on the list. And if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, so you're updated the moment I upload new videos. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day or night, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.